Alright guys, I'm going to show you how to assemble the center differential on this truck. As you can see, we're up to step C1 and we are going to start with the spur gear. And just like on the front differential, it has the optional shim right here, the LOS A3501, which they do not supply in the kit, um, but apparently it is not necessary on the Truggy kit. So I'm going to assemble the center differential for you here right now. Um, as they show you, as you can see, this is a 51 tooth um, spur gear that they supply you with. And you're going to want to use the supplied high pressure black grease that they supply you with in the kit. And you will apply it where they say it's necessary as you can see right here it says black grease black grease on the o-ring so that's what we're going to do now i have already installed the o-ring but i'll show you really quick how you're going to want to do this i'm going to try and get it all in frame for you so i basically apply my black grease a nice thin ring you don't want to over apply it and you can install your o-ring right now if you like or you can install it after you put in your outdrive cup so now we're looking at the other side of the spur gear and first we're going to install the flange bearing with the flange side facing towards the spur gear like so and then you're going to take your outdrive cup and they there is a groove right here that you can barely see. Hopefully that'll focus on camera. Sorry, I'm in front of the camera right now, but they want you to apply some black grease on the inside of this groove, which I really like. You know, that's just another good quality feature on this vehicle that, you know, there's serviceable parts on here that you can add grease, and you're basically going to slide that all through Okay, slide it all through. And I use my fingers to keep that O-ring in place. If you want, you can use a instrument such as a pick, but be very careful that you do not break that O-ring. And this is the part where I would be used to installing a an, um, washer or the optional shim to keep that O-ring in place, but on this kit, it's not necessary so they want you to install your pin and that was where it threw me off on the front differential you know I was curious about that um, but apparently all you need to keep this in place is the pin and as you can see there is some up and down movement and that's why I would have liked to use the shim but apparently it's not necessary so I do have that black grease installed. Hopefully you guys can see that. And now you're going to install your bevel gear right on the pin. And that's what keeps everything in place. Now you'll see there is a little bit of up and down movement. And that's kind of why I wanted to install a shim there. But Losi says it's not necessary. So now we're going to move on to the diff case assembly, which is part step uh, C2 right over here and we're going to install it the same exact way before we install the planetary gears so basically we'll put this spur gear off to the side we have the diff case itself I'm going to install my black grease on the inside there pop in my o-ring 
Okay, so that's seated into place. I don't know if you can see that in there. See that O-ring? There it is, installed into place. And you're gonna take your outdrive cup, you're going to install your black TLR grease in that inner groove. Work it in with your fingers. There you go. Um, and then you're going to take your flanged bearing. I am working on my Cow RC pit mats now, so some of the parts I have in the parts trade, some of them are a little hard to get off because of the magnetism, but man, let me tell you, these Cow RC pit mats work phenomenally, and they're definitely helping out this build, making it a pleasure to wrench. And we're going to install that outdrive cup through there. Now, of course, the O-ring had popped up just a little bit out of the groove, so like I said, you're going to want to take some kind of a tool and just push it back down into place ever so slightly without compromising that o-ring you don't want to rip it or break it now i'm going to use a needle nose pliers to assist getting that back into place and that works pretty good and now we are going to install the pin this can be a little tricky there are some cutaways here inside the diff to allow you to get this pin in, but I found if you install it into the outdrive cup first and then maneuver it into place, it usually goes in pretty smooth. And as you can see, I did so right there. So now the pin is holding the O-ring in place. You want to spin everything, make sure that it's working properly. Hopefully you guys could see that. Sorry, I'm on the other side of the camera right now. And now we're going to drop in our bevel gear, spin that, and there we go. Got it all in place. Now it's time for our planetary gears. This is the fun part. And as you can see, we have two pins and four planetary gears. We have one pin, two pins, and four planetary gears. One, two, three, four. Getting a little bit more in depth for you guys here. I know that these build videos can get a little lengthy, but I know a lot of you enjoy seeing this. So we're up to step number C3. And as you can see, it's going to be joining the spur gear to the diff housing, uh, the diff cup, I mean, um, and installing those four planetary gears with the two cross pins. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with how to do this, but if not, I'm going to try and do it for you here on camera. And what I like to do is I like to put my gears on first. What I do is I drop in one first into place and then you want to get that cut away where you can actually turn your gear and I don't know if you can see that but there's a flat spot on that one pin so now you can lay your other pin on top of that once you get your gears on and you're going to drop your other one right on top of there and make sure that everything is in place and you'll see when everything turns nicely so this is the part where I'm going to fill the differential now I know I had stated in my other video that I'm going to be going with a different setup on this I'm going to go with a bashing setup so the front differential on this kit for racing it's 7,000 weight on the front and rear differentials and 10,000 weight on the center but I changed it up and I went with 50,000 weight on the front and rear diff and I'm going with TLR 100,000 weight 100,000 weight for the center so this is super thick super thick oil um, it's rather warm in my house right now because I do have the heat on um, 
in normal, you know, if it was a little bit colder out or if you did get this and you felt like it was a little too thick, you might want to soak it in warm water just to loosen it up ever so slightly. But I usually don't have that much of an issue with it. So I am going to install that right now. Okay, so basically when I fill my diff, I do it very slow and I try and get it into all the nooks and crannies off the bat. And you don't want to overfill it right away. You want to slowly work it in and I'll fill it up a little bit and you just want to ever so slightly turn. Now you don't want to spin the gears all together just yet. You don't want to rotate the gears too much. You just want to move them side to side ever so slightly to work in that diff oil. Ever so slightly. And then you want to pump in a little bit more into the corners. And that's why I really like this TLR grease or this diff oil because it comes in this tube, easy applicating tube, so you can really work it in there. And you're gonna, at this point, start rotating it a little bit more. And you can see the, the gears will lift up just a little bit, but that's actually allowing the diff fluid to get under those gears and work its way in there. And in the owner's manual, it does say to fill it up just above the planetary gear. So you're gonna wanna fill it up just above that line. And you're gonna wanna let it sit just for a little bit, let it work its way in. Don't rush this part. And you don't wanna get too many air bubbles in, this, in the fluid as well, because that can also affect the performance. And you wanna take your time and you also don't want to lock in any air. Like I said, no air bubbles, but when you do connect these two, when you connect the spur gear to the diff cup, you don't want there to be any air trapped in there. So I just dropped my bevel gear in there, but that's actually not the worst thing. So we'll get that back on there. And you let it sit for a couple minutes and Once it sits, once it starts getting settled in, make sure everything's covered. Let it sit and we'll be back in a couple of moments. Okay, so I've let it sit for about five minutes now and you can see there are a few air bubbles in there but the fluid has settled. And with this thick of diff fluid, you're definitely not gonna be able to get all those air bubbles out. But that's why you need to let it sit and it's settled, it's nice and level. It's got into all the nooks and crannies. So now it's going to be time to join the spur gear and attach it right on top of the diff cup. You are going to install your gasket and that's why it's nice to put a little bit of the diff fluid on here, especially, you know, get it on your gasket a little bit, get it nice and sticky so that it'll kind of stick on there for you and it won't move out of place when you do install it. So we're gonna put it on there like so. And everything is nice and lubricated and happy. And next step is getting the spur gear attached to the diff cup. Okay, so now we are ready to join the two. You wanna be very careful with this step. And you want to do it kind of quick, like I just did. What I like to do is take my pin or my pick and make sure that I'm at the four holes. And you want to make sure that your gasket is lined up as well. So we know our four holes are lined up. You know, and this is also where you can bleed out a little bit of the fluid, which is good. Let that fluid bleed out a little bit, any of the excess. Now, 
you're going to take your 564th, 564th hex driver and you're going to get it started here. Okay, once you get all your holes lined up, you slowly want to start each one. These took a little bit of pressure to get them into the holes, but you'll constantly want to check and make sure that nothing is slipping, nothing is binding, we have movement, so we know that we're good. And you want to keep this flat on the table, keep the pressure down. You don't want to take a chance of slipping like I just did. <laughs> you, you want to slowly keep on tightening. You don't want to tighten one screw more than the other. You want to just keep on going around, tighten them all at the same amount and slowly start tightening down your spur gear to the diff cup. Now, like I said, I am using 100,000 weight. Pardon me if my fingers have been in the way. And you wanna keep on checking. Make sure that everything is moving nicely, which it is. Okay, and you want to go corner to corner. You don't want to, you know, you want to make sure that you apply even pressure to all of them. And wow, I'm really liking these MIP hand tools. They really, really work well. And now we're just about tightened all the way. And wow, I can see that, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty thick fluid we have going on in there, but it works pretty good. So we're gonna give it one last tight tightening, even pressure on all. There we go. Take a clean side of your towel here, clean it all up. Clean up all your excess, although a little bit of extra lube never hurt anybody. Clean it all up nicely. And that's how you assemble the center differential on the 8T 4.0 Nitro Truggy. All right, let's keep on moving forward. Looks good. And this quality of metal is really, really nice as well. All right, guys, I'm gonna keep moving forward and I'll show you the progress of the build as we move forward. And I'm hoping to get the whole center assembly of this vehicle together on this part two of the build series. Okay, next step after the center diff assembly is step number C4, which is the center top brace assembly which I've already assembled off camera. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, have to install your brake linkage guides, which are these right here. And they have to be precisely set at certain distance. Um, as you can see, this one is literally half a millimeter. And this one here is set at seven millimeters out. So as you can see, this one right here has been set at half millimeter. And that one there has been set at seven millimeters. Of course, you're going to want to use a good set of calipers here. Um, so yeah, got the center top brace assembly completed. Step number C4. Now let's move on to step number C5, which is the actual linkage assembly. Okay, step number C5 is completed. Did that off camera as well, got everything set up here and uh, as close to what they're showing here in the diagram, uh, they're not giving any special measurements here. I guess you're going to have to really get everything set up once you have your servos and engine 
mounted onto the truck, um, but I got it as close as possible. Um, yeah, as you can see, uh, these little, little miniature ball bearings here that get inserted into the horn here. Uh, you can't really see it because I already have it installed, but very nice. Um, everything went together pretty well. And this here is going to go, like I said, through the guides. So next step after C5 is going to be step number C6, and that's going to mount the linkage assembly to the center brackets. And um, yeah, you're gonna have to cut some fuel tubing here and get everything set up. So as you can see, we have the fuel tubing right here, pieces that they supply you with and it's going to have to be cut to specific length, nine millimeters. So you're gonna to have to trim just a hair off of each one of these. And that basically adds some cushioning to your brakes. So let me get that assembled and then I'll show you what that looks okay, like. Okay, step C6 is being completed. I attached the linkage assembly to the center bracket. As you can see right here, uh, like I said, um, Put them through the uh, guides, the linkage guides, top and bottom, you can see. Um, I cut the fuel tubing to nine millimeters in length, and you wanna be somewhat precise here, and you want your stops at the end there to uh, measure the linkages you want to come out approximately 2.8 millimeters. So I have those set with my calipers. So you want to set those at 2.8 millimeters. So that's all set. The linkage assembly has been attached to the center top brace assembly. And now we're moving on to step C7, which is the air filter guard. Mounting the air filter guard onto the uh, center assembly right there. So let's get that done and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, the air filter guard an air filter bracket has been mounted to the center brace. You can see very nice stainless steel hardware. I'm very pleased to see the stainless steel hardware throughout the whole kit so far. And now we are on to finally the brake caliber assembly with the uh, center diff mount here. And as you can see, there's going to be some more fine adjustments here. You're going to want the spacing between your brake pads to be 3.8 millimeters. So you have the brake pads right over here. I have those springs, miniature springs. So let me get the brake caliber assembly all set up, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, step C8 has been completed. The brake pads have been installed. Spacing of 3.8 millimeters, as you can see. Something I just wanted to point out might be a helpful tip to most of you. Um, don't have to do it, but I'm pretty particular when it comes to my stuff. These uh, brake pads here are stamped. So um, there's going to be a rounded edge and a flat edge. So I prefer the flat edge to be facing inward. And that's basically what's going to be applying the pressure to the brake, uh, brake uh, rotors themselves. Um, you could assemble them both ways. It doesn't specify in the kit, but I would highly suggest that you install the flat part towards the inside, as you can see. That'll just um, give you more of a flatter surface to um, apply pressure to the actual brake discs right there. But yeah, this is something new um, that most of you electric guys um, probably have never seen before, but yeah, these are going to be actual functioning brakes. Um, very similar to my low C5T, just on a shrunken down scale. So that's pretty cool. So, all right, step C8 has been completed. Getting closer and closer to the center completion of this vehicle. Next one is to mount the center differential and brake rotor assembly together. So that's awesome. See, so basically, um, the brake assembly, these right here, the center differential, these are basically what's called diff carriers. So the center diff will go through the diff carriers, which the brake pads are attached to the diff carriers. 
and then your brake discs go onto the outside and get attached to the outdrive cups of the center diff. So let me get that all completed and then I will show you the finished product here. Okay, getting closer and closer to mounting the center diff assembly. I'm halfway through step number C9, but I just wanted to share this with you before I affix the center diff carrier to the top brace assembly. One specification right here is that the larger diameter brake disc goes on the spur gear side and the smaller diameter brake disc goes on the opposite side. So as you can see, I have everything right here. And yes guys, these are fully mechanical brakes. You can see your brake discs and your brake pads right here. And uh, it's pretty cool. And now the next thing to do is to mount the top brace assembly with the linkages to the top of the diff carrier. And then we will be moving on to C10, which is actually mounting everything to the chassis. So I have the front assembly set up. Pretty soon the center assembly will be assembled. And then we'll be moving on to the back end of the truck. So let me get this finished up and we'll move on to C10, the mounting of it to the chassis. Okay, all finished with the center differential brake rotor assembly here. Uh, just wanted to point out one thing here in step number C9. As you can see, they're only telling you to install three of the screws to the top center bracket. So you can see one, two, three. They're leaving out the fourth one because later on down the line, once you get your servo tray and everything installed into the truck, uh, there is going to be a bracket that goes from the throttle linkage horn here to the center um, diff carrier here. So we're leaving out that one screw for right now. But I'm excited because we're on step number C10, the center differential installation onto the chassis yes so that's what it's going to look like when it's all done let me get it installed and then i'll show you the finished product okay i wanted to point something out and i'm trying to do this to help some of you out there that might have these questions if you ever build this kit now to mount the center differential assembly to the chassis as you can see we have these four holes right here that match up with the bottom four holes on the differential now they're showing that you need to use these brackets here which are these plastic brackets um, supplied with the C bag um, and I noticed that on the directions here it's just showing you to use the four uh, beveled screws and mount it through the bracket up into the uh, the diff carrier here um, but I noticed that there was a third hole and as you can see, there's a third hole here. So they do have these two additional uh, beveled screws here that will go onto the inside of this right here. Sorry about my fingers. And that will screw to the bottom and they will get affixed to the bottom of the diff carrier. So I'm gonna screw those in and then I'm going to mount it to the chassis and then install the four screws. So I'll be back in a second. So there you go. I have the brackets screwed to the bottom of the diff carrier. Uh, like I said, sometimes these directions aren't that specific, um, but that's why it's a good idea when you're building a kit to not rush through it, not want to jump to the next step. Cover all your bases. If you see bags that have some parts in it or you have some questions, be very thorough. And you don't want to jump ahead too quick. So it's always good to, what's the old adage, measure twice and cut once, right? If you're a carpenter, um, it's always good to double check everything and not rush forward because... Unfortunately, you would think with a race quality kit that they wouldn't have any kind of vagueness to the directions, but unfortunately there is. So I installed those, I screwed them in, and now it's time to mount it to the chassis finally. Let's do it. All right, guys, the center differential installation has been completed. And it's starting to resemble a Truggy a little bit. <laughs> 
Uh, maybe a little. <laughs> but yeah, every step, every nut and bolt that you install is one step closer to being completed. And that was a little bit of a long-winded step, but it's a very important part of any gas-powered vehicle is your center differential, your diff carrier with your linkages and your brake assembly here. So as you can see, this is uh, this side right here is going to be your servo tray. Uh, this, your throttle link servo and brake servo is going to, that's how that's going to work. And as you can see, when this applies pressure, when your, your th uh, brake servo, throttle servo, presses up against that, it's going to squeeze the brake pads and slow down the vehicle, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, everything went together nicely. I uh, can't really set everything up 100% until you have the engine. Uh, this is your carburetor link right here, your th or your throttle link that will attach to the actual carburetor on the engine. Engine's gonna get mounted right here. Um, but next step, as you can see, we just completed C11. Completed center differential assembly. Excellent. I like how everything fit, by the way. Everything fits like a glove. I love how the air filter bracket and protector here matches nicely up against the gas tank. Just love the look of this vehicle so far. Love the stainless steel hardware. Everything is looking phenomenal. So we're moving from C11 now to D1. So that will bring us to the end of part two, which is the center differential assembly installation. And the next video, part three, look forward to moving on to the rear differential, which is going to be awesome. One step closer to completing the vehicle. So we got the front and the center done, moving on to, to D1, which will be part three. So that's about it for today for me, guys. So I hope you're all making it happen in your RC worlds out there. And for now, this is Chris the Everyday RC Guy in TLR land saying thanks for watching.